I'm David Zeiger. I am the director and writer of Sweet Old World, and I am here at the uh, 2012 uh, AMC Kansas City Film Fest. I love it. City Film Fest. Thank you very much. I, I like being here. It's a great place. Now, I believe you were uh, you were here earlier when uh, we were still the Jubilee uh, back in 2005 or six. Or mm -hmm. I was here in 2006 with a film called Sir No Sir, which was a documentary feature that I made about the story of the GI uh, anti-war movement during the Vietnam War, which is a story that had been very deeply suppressed. Um, I'm a, I have, up until now have been a documentary filmmaker. I, I started in the early 90s, uh, made several uh, films for television and, and a couple documentary features. And Sweet Old World is my first narrative, my first uh, foray in the fiction. The genesis of the film is, <clears throat> uh, it comes from my own life. I, I had a son who, who died suddenly when he was nine years old. <clears throat> and he had a brother, has a brother, uh, who was two years younger than him. And when his brother uh, Danny was in high school in, uh, the, uh, in Decatur, Georgia, which is where we lived, we lived in Atlanta at the time, uh, I made a film called The Band, which was a personal documentary about the year, his 16th year, uh, and his world in his high school marching band. And in that context, the film I was exploring and really dealing with both his and my lives in the wake of, and several years after, uh, his brother Michael had died. And it, I, I fairly soon, that, that film was in 1998, and I began working on a screenplay for Sweet Old World um, right after that. I wanted to just keep exploring uh, a lot of the parameters of, you know, of, of, of our lives. Um, and Sweet Old World gave me the chance to base it on my own experience, but to create a, a different world, to create different characters, um, to have people dealing with, with many of the same things that I've dealt with, but going in different directions and kind of seeing where that would go, seeing what would, you know, where that would take people in life. And so that's that's what I worked on. I worked on the script for about 10 years. Um, it took me that long to, to find the story that I wanted to tell. In 2010, I got a Guggenheim Fellowship and that, that got us started. And um, we started pre-production right around uh, right around March, March, April of 2010, so it's been two years since then. Uh, and it's been a very uh, intense and very heady process for me. We shot, <coughs> excuse me, we shot six weeks uh, during the summer. Um, we had, one of, one of the, the, the dynamics of the film is that I shot a lot of it in the midst of a real high school and a real high school band. My wife teaches at South Pasadena High School in Los Angeles, and we have a very good relationship there. So I was given permission pretty much to shoot the entire film in the midst of the, the, the school year and, and the, the football season and the high school band, which is something that I intended to do all along. Um, so we shot during the summer. We shot a lot of what the scripted scenes that took place off the campus. And then starting late summer and into the fall, we shot um, combination of, of, of the scripted and a lot of documentary footage um, with the band and with the kids in the band um, and um, embedded a lot of scenes in that and we also kind of did a lot of what amounted to improv where the, the two actors who played the two high school kids in the film, one of whom was from that high school anyway so it was really his world. Um, but they just became part of that world and we let things happen along those lines. Um, and then it was about a nine month, uh, actually it was more like a year editing process. And during the editing, um, I learned very painfully and very uh, uh, deeply how much when you're shooting a narrative, when you're, you know, I mean, the, 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 uh, the cliche is you make three films. You write one film, you shoot another film and you edit a third film. 
and I, I learned that in this process. It's, in, in a lot of ways, it's not that different from documentary, but um, but about six months into the editing, I realized that that I just I mean I had not told the story yet that I wanted to tell. It wasn't. I wasn't communicating in a way that I wanted to. So we actually stopped all of the, the post-production. I went back and I, I rewrote uh, a good deal of the script. Um, and we were able to pull together uh, the crew and, and the actors and we went back and did about two more weeks of shooting. And changed the story a lot at that point. And I think that was, uh, that was the point in which I think, in which I, I, I finally ended up with the film that I wanted. Just out of curiosity, so what elements did you find were not work, so were not working? In the That's a good question. Um, it really boiled down to the father, Brian. Um, I had, I had, in in my original thinking about the the, the film, um, I mean, Brian is is someone who is very, who's kind of he's he's a living suicide. He's, he has buried himself in his grief. Um, and, and, you know, closed off the world, uh, including his son. And I had not in, kind of, in, in the process of the film, it's a, it's, a, it's a film about, kind of, I won't call it Brian's redemption, but his, his, his re-emergence into life, and through his son, and through how his son reacts to the, the best friend of his brother who was killed showing back up after having disappeared 10 years ago. Um, and what happened was, I think that when I originally wrote the film and when we originally shot it, I wasn't allowing Brian to change. I kind of, I held Brian very closely. <laughs> and I, I, I wanted the change to be something very internal and very subtle and to not really emerge and show itself until the end of the film, and I just found that that, I mean, frankly, not just in terms of the film, it didn't work, but it wasn't real. It wasn't how people go through this kind of process. I was, I was, uh, I was not letting, in fact, in some ways I wasn't letting my own experience, you know, guide me a little bit more than, than it did. So I, I, I kind of, in a certain sense, I let Brian loose, <laughs> you know, I freed him from my own restrictions. And I let him start reacting to, to things in a way that, that, that took a, a, a visual form. I mean, this is a visual medium. And, and um, actually, in one of the things that helped me a lot, I, I, I fortunately have gotten to know um, a, a great um, independent filmmaker named uh, Robert Young. Who's, uh, he made uh, two seminal films in the 60s. Uh, um, Nothing but a man, uh, and I forgot the name of the other one. Uh, and he's he's a, you know he's made many Stand, many films. Stand by me, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. And uh, uh, Dominic and Jean, he's, he's just made wonderful films. And Robert, who's who's in his mid 80s by the way, and still going strong. He's he, he was at Sundance with the screenplay this year. Um, he he he. I've been going through this whole process of you know trying to get it to work, trying to get it to work, and finally I showed the film to Robert. And he just tore it to shreds. And the thing that he said that really stuck with me is he said, nothing's happening. I mean, things were happening, but they weren't happening in, in relation to each other. And they weren't happening as a result of each other. I, it, 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 was, it was a great lesson for me in the whole nature of film and nature of, 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 of drama. And, and um, that really kind of, that was the, the moment that, that caused me to really back up. And, and rethink, you know, rethink the whole, the whole, the whole film. Jock Holman, and I found him at the, at the high school in South Pasadena. He's he's a he's an aspiring actor, and he was in the theater program in the school. And in some ways, I cast him despite that. You know, a, you, you get a lot of long training in high school, I think. Um, but Jock was just I I was immediately drawn to him, as I think everyone is who sees the film. Um, he, there was, uh, he, you know, even in embodying this character, uh, who was quite different from him, you know, his personality, um, he he really just he just lived it. He lived in that uh, 
he lived in that person. And um, yeah, I found him. I spent a year uh, basically hanging out at the high school um, and getting to know kids, getting to know the kids in the band. Kind of, I was looking for my lead. I was looking for my Ethan. I didn't want to hire someone from outside and bring him into that setting. I wanted it to be very real and very organic. And I was just really fortunate uh, to find John. Um, I think, yeah, I think he's wonderful, and I think uh, he's hopefully had a real a, a big career. So, I, I've done a lot of documentaries about high school kids. I did a series uh, called Senior Year that was about uh, kids at Fairfax High in Los Angeles. And I've always kind of had a very, you know, one of the bugs I have about a lot of films and certainly television shows about high school kids is that they, no one acts like a high school kid. No one acts like a I had this experience when I was when I was uh, uh, spending time at the school. Uh, South Pasadena High, where we made the film, is located. Uh, you know, it's in it's in a suburb of Los Angeles. It's very open school, and it's used for a lot of a lot of film shoots because of its location. And I think they shot they they they, they were they shot a lot of scenes for uh, Nip Nip Tuck there. It looks like the Miami school. And I had there was this hilarious thing that I saw where. They were setting up a, sh a, a scene during the school day, during lunch, and you know, was, high school kids, you know, teenagers are frenetic. I mean, they're bouncing all over each other, they're hitting each other, they're hugging, they're, you know, it's a very physical, very you know, active, very alive kind of uh, life. And while they're setting the scene, all the kids in the school are just like, you know, going crazy. And lunch ends, the kids all go back to class. They go to shoot the scene, they call in the extras. And the extras all come in, and they're all just like these Joe Cool college kids, you know, just walking around. And it, was, and it, was, it, was, you know, it was amazing to me that no one involved in the production noticed you know, how different it all was. So for me, as a documentary filmmaker, and just the way I like to work and the way I like to see things, I wanted to, to, to make it very kind of organic to the school. And to the Yes. And that's that's how I ended up with Jacques. The direction I want to move in is, is much more towards narrative, although not exclusively. I'm a big fan of the Dardenne brothers, of, of uh, um, Ramin Barani in, in New York, people who work in that kind of, in that, you know, it's, it's kind of, I guess it's a genre, you know, ultra real, or, or I'm not sure what, what the term is. but. Uh, I just I, that's how I like that's how I like the films that I like the films that I'm drawn to um, and uh, and the films that I want to continue to try to make and to try to learn more and and, and um, I never I hate doing the same thing twice I don't like um, it's kind of probably my downfall and as soon as I get really good at something I, I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, so as long as it's a struggle, as long as it's a learning process, that's, that's what I want to do.